Hi, this is Laura from St. John the Baptist Parish Library, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own holiday greeting card in Adobe Photoshop as a part of my Adobe Photoshop tutorial series. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by showing you a resource that I use frequently for these videos called Pexels.com. So I'm going to go ahead and type it into the search bar. Pexels.com is a website that offers free stock photos and royalty-free images for people to use um, for their own purposes for free. Um, there's a lot of different images on here. And for this video, I'm going to be using it to search for holiday-related images. The holiday image is going to be the basis, the, um, the base of my greeting card. Um, for my purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and use this one right here with the candy canes on the wreath. And I'm just going to click the button that says free download, and it's automatically going to download it into my folder and then I'm going to go ahead and launch Photoshop and I'm going to open the image straight into Photoshop instead of making a canvas and then we have the base of our greeting card right here so what I'm going to do now is I am going to go to the text tool in the toolbar, which is the T, and I'm going to trace the outline of a text box. There's already going to be some text preset there, but you can just delete that. It's just to show you what it's going to look like. As you can see, I already have a color and a font picked out. I'm going to type, for my purposes, I'm going to type Happy Holidays from St. John the Baptist Parish Library, um, but you can type whatever you want for your greeting card um, in the text box. And then I'm going to highlight it and there's a little toolbar beneath the text box that shows up. I'm going to change the font size. I'm going to kind of mess around with it and see what I want. The font size is right there where it says 275 point. You can change that number to whatever you want. I did end up settling on 275 point because that is how I liked it. And then you can click the T on the right of that toolbar and there's a more options where you can set it to bold or italics or you can put underlines beneath it. For my purposes, I liked it in bold. And then Photoshop also offers you a bunch of different fonts that you can use. Um, you can scroll down the list and see which ones that you like. Um, there's a bunch of different fonts. You can also import your own fonts, but that is a whole different tutorial on how to import your own fonts into Photoshop. So I'm just going to go with the ones that they already have um, in the program. And then the one that I ended up using is French Script MT Regular, which is the cursive one that I started with, but I just wanted to show you the options um, to see what you could use. So like I said, I'm going to go with that French Script and something that you can do is that you can go to the rectangle tool in the side and you can put a rectangle behind it um, to kind of have it be a visual text box like a, like a background for the text um, and I, what it does is when you use the rectangle tool it automatically sets it up to the color picker so that you can pick a color from the image and I picked one of the greens that you can find in the image that we're using as our base image. Um, but I don't really like how it looks. I think the contrast is, isn't high enough and it's kind of hard to read. So I'm just kind of setting up this rectangle so that I can get the border where I want it. And then what you can do is there's a little toolbar that will pop up beneath the rectangle. And you can get rid of the fill 
because the fill was green just now, and instead you can go with a stroke color. So I made the stroke color the green, and then I went in that little drop down where the dots are, and I picked the dots as my border so that it has more of a dotted border. And then if you see that little curve button, the curve button, you can make the corners of the rectangle rounded. So that's what I'm doing as well. And I made them all rounded to the same degree. So that's what I'm doing right now. So now I have a border around my text instead of having a rectangle behind it and instead of just having it floating on its own, I think it looks nice to have that rectangle there to have the frame around the, the words. So I'm going to do the same thing again, but instead I'm going to put a border around the whole image to have a frame. And again, you want to get rid of that fill and instead do the stroke. So I'm going to do the stroke again, and this time I am going to make it, I'm going to make it the same settings as I did on the one surrounding the text, except I'm going to make this one red. So I'm going to use the color picker and I'm going to use the same red that the text is. So as you can see, it's still that green right now, but that red is in my recent colors from when I did the text. So I'm going to click that. And I'm also going to make the frame, the dots on the frame, the same size so that everything kind of looks uniform. But yes, I'm going to make the frame red using the color picker. And then I'm going to move it around and make sure that it's centered. There's like little guidelines that come up, that little purple line that came up in the middle of the canvas. That is the guideline that lets you know that it is in the center. So if you want to do something extra, there is a website that comes along with the Creative Cloud called Adobe Stock where you can find uh, PNGs, uh, transparent little stickers basically that you can add to the image. The only downside to Adobe Stock is that most of the PNGs that are available to use you do have to pay for. But as you can see they have a lot of different options. Instead, what I use is this website, freepick.com, F-R-E-E-P-I-K.com, and you can filter it on Freepick for free images, and I'm just going to type in holiday PNG. And I'm going to scroll until I find something that I like. I like this little holly berry. And then you just download it. Just a free download. Um, the file is going to be in a zip file. When you download it, you're just going to have to extract it. Um, I extracted mine and then I'm going to open it in a separate canvas on Adobe and then I'm going to click it and drag it into my canvas. So you just click it and drag it over to the other tab. I'm going to change the size, make it smaller, kind of put it where I want it. Obviously, I'm going to have to move things around now to get them out of the, vo out of the way of my PNG. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to go and grab onto the text, and I'm going to move that up and center it. And then I'm going to go and grab onto the rectangle and I'm going to center it. I'm going to adjust that PNG a little bit more, make it smaller. 
Um, and then what I did is I made a copy of the holly berry. Um, and then I, there's a little toolbar that comes up. And you just click on to that little square. And then you click the third button from the left, which is basically mirroring the image. And then all I did after that was I dragged it to the other side, dragged the copy of the PNG to the other side of the canvas so it could mirror the other one. But now we've got all this empty space, so I took a picture of the St. John the Baptist Parish Library logo, and I'm going to do the same thing with that that I did with the PNGs of the holly berries, and I'm just going to drag it into the other canvas and put it in my greeting card. There is an option to... AI, use AI to remove the background of the image, but as you can see, um, because of the nature of the St. John the Baptist Parish Library logo, it's kind of hard to remove the background entirely. So I'm just going to leave it, and then instead what I'm going to do is I am going to make another rectangle. and put it around the logo. Another green one. I'm gonna make sure that it's centered where I want it. And then for all my purposes, that's basically all I have to do. I think that this looks like a pretty good, well put together greeting card. Um, for your purposes, you can add more or you can add less, but all of this stuff is pretty simple. It's stuff that we've encountered in easier tutorials that I've done. The beginner tutorial, I taught you how to do all of these things and use all of these tools. Um, all we used in this is PNGs, um, like, so images that we just uploaded and on our own, from our own computers, um, the rectangle tool, the text tool, and that's, that's really it. So as long as you know how to use those things, it should be no problem to make a greeting card. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.